All right, we're back. We are on page 188 of math analysis. And uh, in the previous video, we talked about the distance formula. So I'm just kind of summarizing the distance formula for you here. If you remember what I like to do, instead of actually typing that in, is I like to create a vector. Um, so I'll create a vector that's like x2 of t minus x1. Well, actually, the way that I like to do it on the calculator is I do x2, y2, don't forget your of t's, minus x1, y1, don't forget the of t's that I keep forgetting to say. Um, I gotta move this over. And then, uh, so I'll create that vector and then I find, let's say that's a v of t. And then what I'll do is um, I will just find the norm of v of t. And then that, what that does is it finds x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, that's, that's the vector v. Then the norm of that is the square root of the component squared. It's actually the distance formula. So that's, I think, easier to do. But you can do it however you want. If you have, it, uh, if you have everything defined, it's not hard to type this in. It's just kind of tedious. Um, so let's see if we can do some stuff. So uh, this the next two pages are kind of just like practice problems uh, where you can see if you really understand what's going on. First thing we gotta do is write some equations. What I'm gonna do is uh, write the equation and let me just gotta fire up my calculator while we're uh, talking here. I'm gonna write the equations and as I write the equations, I'm gonna go in and store them in my calculator because we're gonna use calculator to do kind of a lot of, uh, a lot of this work. So let's see, uh, bird one flies from one to to nine fourteen. So one thing to notice is that uh, for all of these, well, not for all of these, but in the first three problems, it's the same point. So like birds one and two are um, starting at one, two and ending at nine fourteen. Bird three is gonna start at nine fourteen and end at one, two. So they're on the same line segment, but they're going different directions. At least um, birds one and two are going the same way and bird three is going the opposite way. And I don't know, I guess the video is probably slow because the calculator is uh, starting up. I don't know, maybe not, maybe it's just slow. Having a slow day. All right, let's see. So I'm gonna say that this, ooh, even the highlighter. I'm gonna say that this bird, we've got an X1 and a Y1 for bird one. So it's one, two, you're gonna add eight and it takes 20. You're gonna add 12 and it takes 20. And then this is only valid between zero and 20. Okay, not a problem, right? That's pretty standard. Uh, store them on your calculator. I'll do that in a second. Um, I'm gonna do one, two, and three first. X2, Y2. All right, again, you're starting at one, two. You're gonna add eight, but it only takes you 18 minutes. And then here you're gonna add 12, but it takes 18. So this bird's faster. Um, you know, I'm sure we've all seen birds that fly at different, actually, I don't really know, like, Obviously, there's got to be a difference in how fast birds can fly. Like, they're not just like carbon copies of each other, but like, I never really thought about it. Uh, bird three, X, oh, X three, Y three. Um, so this time you're starting at 914, and then you're going to lose eight, and it takes 12 minutes. And then you're going to lose 12, and it takes 12 minutes. And this will happen between zero and 12. So this one's actually the fastest because it can do everything in 12. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the calculator and just store all of those so we can use them. So let's see. Um, so calculator, I'm gonna add a graph page first because I think that's the easiest way to enter these. And you do menu three, option four is parametric. Now I'm gonna put these in. So X1 is gonna be one plus eight over 20T. And then cursor always in the way, two plus 12, over 20 T you can simplify them, but like the calculator is going to just do it for you. I'm going to change the upper bound to 20 just cause I guess. Um, and then maybe I'll actually zoom out. I mean, it's not, you don't really need, I mean, it's useful to see it actually, I guess. I'm going to say you don't need to, I don't know if you can hear this bird that is just like screaming outside my window, but uh, it's great. All right. Hit tab one plus eight, uh -oh, eight over 18 T. And then uh, 2 plus 12 over 18t. And then it should take 18. So one nice thing about seeing it, though, 
is that uh, I know that this should be the same line segment. So if I see something new on the screen, I know that I've messed up. Um, and you can see it like completely overlaps. And that's what was supposed to happen because they're the same line segment. And when I enter the third one, it's, it's also supposed to be the same line segment. You're just going a different way. So nine minus eight over 12 T and 14 minus 12 over 12 T. And this should take 12 minutes, I guess. That's like a really long flight. Um, it's really, it, it should probably be seconds, whatever. Um, so you can see all three of them overlapping. So we probably entered these correctly. Uh, let's see if another, I mean, another thing you can do is you can trace if you want to see if you're like likely to have gotten it correct. Uh, so like here, if I type zero, uh, when T is zero, I'm at one, two, and then when T is 20, because this X1, Y1 takes 20 minutes, I should be at 914. And if I press up, uh, X2, Y2. So if I type zero, I'm at one, two. And if I type 18, I should be at 914. And I am. And then for three, uh, zero, I'm at 914. And then uh, 12, I should be back at one, two. And I am. So that's like a good way to check. So I think I have all of those correctly entered. So let's go back and see if we can understand uh, the problem. So what are we going to do? We didn't actually do anything yet. We just like wrote the parametric. That's like the first step in almost every parametric problem is to write your parametric equations and then you got to use them for stuff. When and where do birds two and three, so two and three, okay, where do they intersect? What's different about this? So this is, we haven't actually done a problem like this yet, which is sort of interesting to me. So, um, if you think about it, you got, what do you have here? Like you have your line segment that kind of, let's say, looks like this, right? And then you have a uh, bird two starting here. So let's call that B2. And then you'll have bird three, a uh, different color. You'll have bird three starting here. And then what's going to happen is bird three is going to go this way. feels like a vectory thing. And bird two is going to go this way. So we don't have to wonder if they're going to crash. They're definitely going to crash. They're on the same line segment. There's no way they don't crash, which means they're definitely going to get to the point of intersection at the same time. They have to. So they'll get here. Ew, what are you? That's an E. At the same time. Like it's got to happen. So we actually can solve this one a little differently. We don't need to do the system of equations thing because they have to have the same, uh, they have to get to the intersection point at the same time. So there is a specific time when X2 is gonna equal X3. There's a time. At the same time, Y2 will equal Y3. Like has to be the case because they have to intersect. So uh, we can actually solve this since, so I'm going to say since they're on the same line segment, since on same line segment, um, we just need, well, let's say since they're on the same line segment, they must collide. They must crash. They must crash. So that's exciting. Uh, I mention this every year. If you, well, okay, so if you're, uh, I don't know how you're gonna react to this. You can watch a very interesting video if you look up Randy Johnson, who's a pitcher. I think he was pitch. I don't know who he was pitching for at the time. Uh, I wanna say the Mariners, but I'm not actually sure. Uh, anyway, Randy Johnson once threw a pitch to the catcher in a baseball game. Well, he was throwing it toward the catcher and simultaneously a bird happen to be on the exact same path, an intersecting path, hit. It's like the only time that's ever happened. Like it's, it's this like one in a trillion event. Like how could it have happened? So like, I don't know, disturbing content potentially, like don't, don't go look for it if you don't really want to see that, but it's amazing. Um, and it's just like, poof, you just see like feathers everywhere. So it's up to you if you want to go see that. I don't know if I'm recommending it or not. So they must crash. Uh, and so it, we just need to solve x2 of t equals x3 of t. Or we could solve y2 of t 
equals y3 of t. So I'm going to do all this on the calculator because uh, it's just algebra and I make a lot of mistakes on that. And in the videos, I don't feel like you need to watch me do that. So uh, let's go to the calculator again. Then maybe what we can do, like we can make it happen in GeoGebra. And that's, I always think that's the most compelling argument um, for any of this stuff is to like actually see it happen. So I'm gonna do menu three solve. And then everything's in the uh, vars key. That's the whole point of defining everything. So I'm gonna do x2 of t equals x3 of t and solve for t. So I get 36 over five. So that should be the time at which they um, crash. So uh, we can also take a look. So, I mean, this should give me the exact same thing because I know that when their X coordinates are the same, their Y coordinates have to be the same because they're on the same line segment. Being on the same segment makes a huge difference to how you approach the problem. Uh, so you can see I get this. What if I had tried to do the other thing? I actually don't know what the calculator is going to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like solve the system. So let me just finish this. X, oh boy x2 of t comma y2 of t such that uh, and then just paste this down so i the intersection point is 21 over 5 34 over 5 the time is 36 over 5 so um i'll write that down but what if we had done this so what if we misinterpret the problem i'm gonna do menu 3 7 and i'm say two variables and they are t and v and so I need x2 of t to equal x3 of v and y2 of t equal y3 of v. Okay, so uh, let's see what this gives us. It's just weird. Like, what, what is this? And it's basically what it's telling you is it's telling you that you are approaching this problem the wrong way. Um, and you need to uh, reevaluate, right? When you get a weird answer, you're approaching it in not the right way. So what, I don't really know what this is telling me. Like if, if V is some constant, then T will be uh, this other thing. So like I should be able to pick any value for C1 and have it work, but I'm not, I'm not sure about that. So let's, let's write down our answer. So uh, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna switch back to the notes. You can watch me write, but I'm gonna also like secretly on the calculator or on the computer rather, switch back to the calculator and just read it. So it seems like I'm remembering this, but really I'm reading it off and you can't tell. Well, you can because I told you. All right, so this gives me T equals 36 over five minutes. So, uh, and then if we say like X two of 36 over five comma Y two of 36 over five, that's gonna give us the ordered pair 21 over five comma 34 over five. Okay, so what do we wanna write? We wanna, I mean, this doesn't exactly answer it. So I'm gonna say, um, where am I gonna say anything? I'm gonna pick this up and move it. One of the advantages of working on the iPad. So let's write an answer. Let's say, um, Bird two and bird three intersect at uh, 21 fifths, 34 fifths when T equals 36 fifths minutes. All right, so they crashed into each other. They had like forever to get out of each other's way and they just didn't do it. Um, so they crash. So what I'm gonna do is and I'm going to end the video here, come back in the next one, answer the next question, but also like start building this in GeoGebra so that we can like see it happen. Uh, Cause I think that's the best way to really like see all this. So I'll end this video. I'll be back in the next one. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So see you there.